Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of Nesterotal A. This synthesis was published in Organic Letters by the group of His and Naka Ito. Nesterotal A was first isolated in 2019 by Yang et al. from Nestor Anconia halobia a marine actinomycete, isolated from the coral Platygyra. The compound shows activity against retinoid X receptor alpha, a receptor that modulates transcription and is a known target for anti-cancer drugs. Structurally, this compound is thought to derive from diacetyl through a process of trimerization and cyclization. Though this biosynthesis is quite simple, the structure of the compound presents several challenges for total synthesis. This includes the three contiguous hemiacetal and acetals, a tetracyclic 5555 fused ring system, and seven contiguous stereocenters, which makes this compound a very complex target despite its small size. So let's look at the retrosynthetic strategy that these authors took. The first disconnections occur in the acetal framework, mimicking the proposed biosynthesis via an acetal cascade. This polyketone precursor could be constructed through several oxidation steps, from a monocyclic diene, which in turn could be created from an enine cyclization of an alkene and an alkyne. The alkene could be installed using a stereocontrolled addition to a carbonyl, and this intermediate could be constructed using oxidation chemistry of a simple hydrocarbon precursor. So let's look at the synthesis. The synthesis started with a Sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation using AD mix beta. This mixture contains an osmium salt, a chiral ligand, base, and potassium iron hexacyanide, which serves as an oxidant. This generates osmium tetroxide, which undergoes a cycloaddition with the alkene, which is hydrolyzed to form a syn diol, producing the compound in an 88% yield and a 97% EE, which was determined by Mosher analysis. We can look at the reaction transition state to explain this stereoselectivity. The chinkona derived catalyst forms a U-shaped pocket which coordinates to the osmium tetroxide and forces the substrate to approach from only one face, thereby controlling the stereochemistry of the products formed. The secondary alcohol produced by the Sharpless reaction was oxidized to a ketone using IBX. This iodine-based reagent acts as an electrophile and is attacked by the alcohol, forming a highly electrophilic intermediate, which allows for the oxygen bound to the iodine to abstract a proton and oxidize the substrate to a ketone in a 98% yield. Following this reaction, the tertiary alcohol was protected as a mom group using mom chloride in a 97% yield. Taking this forward, the alkyne was then protected using dicobalt octocarbonyl, which forms a stable complex in a 98% yield. This was reacted with butene lithium and lanthanum trichloride, forming the product in a 56% yield and a 4 to 1 DR. The alkyne protection was crucial at this stage, as the steric bulk was necessary to improve the stereoselectivity of the reaction. We can see this by looking at the conformational analysis of the reacting species. The lanthanum provides chelation control by coordinating to the carbonyl oxygen and the oxygen of the mom group, which holds these groups in the same plane. In this conformation, the cobalt-protected alkyne blocks one face of the molecule and forces the nucleophile to approach from the least sterically hindered side and thus controls the stereoselectivity of the reaction. Having served its purpose, the cobalt complex was oxidized using cerium ammonium nitrate to restore the alkyne in an 88% yield, which then took part in an E9 cyclization catalyzed by palladium acetate and triphenylphosphine to produce the first of the four rings of the target in a 53% yield. This cyclization begins with the coordination of the palladium to both the alkene and the alkyne pi bonds. An ene-type cyclization occurs, and the alkene is reduced to a single bond, and the alkyne reduced to a double bond. The intermediate then undergoes a beta-hydride elimination, with the palladium abstracting a proton to produce a new double bond, and the hydride complex then reductively eliminates to regenerate the palladium 2 species, and produce the product. This reaction was quite stereoselective, producing the desired target in a 95 to 5 ratio. We can explain this by looking at the reacting conformations. 
In one of the conformations, there are 1-3 diaxial interactions between the butene and the mom group, which is a destabilizing effect and thus favors the other conformation, which leads to the intended product. In the next reaction, the mom group was then deprotected using the unusual conditions of carbon tetrabromide and isopropyl alcohol. These conditions were arrived at after more typical conditions did not sufficiently deprotect the product in a high enough yield. This reaction works by generating a small amount of HBr in situ, which can hydrolyze the mom group, in this case, producing the product in a 91% yield. This product was then oxidized using molybdenum hexacarbonyl and terp-butyl peroxide. The peroxide first coordinates to the metal complex and then reacts with the more substituted alkene from the face of the molecule anti to the allyl group, producing the mono-epoxidized product in a 70% yield, together with a dioxidized product where both alkenes reacted in a 22% yield. This epoxide was then hydrolyzed using sulfuric acid in water. This protonates the epoxide, making it more electrophilic, and allows the water to attack, opening the epoxide to produce the product in a 70% yield. The water attacks from the less substituted side, as epoxides, when protonated, will change the bond length to allow the positive charge to be stabilized by the more substituted side, and thus this installs a hydroxyl group with the correct stereochemistry. The secondary hydroxyl group introduced by this reaction, was then oxidized to a ketone, again using IBX, which performed the transformation in a 98% yield. The authors found that this ketone would react in further steps to produce unwanted side products, so at this point they protected it as an acetal. This was carried out using PPTS as an acid catalyst in methanol. This protonated the ketone, allowing for the intramolecular attack of a tertiary hydroxyl group on the same face of the ring. Further reaction formed the methyl acetal in a 59% yield. With this protection in place, the alkene produced by the enine cyclization was oxidized to a diol, again using osmium tetroxide, producing the product in a 92% yield and a 1 to 1 DR. This lack of stereo control wasn't an issue, however, as these hydroxyl groups were oxidized to ketones using IBX in a 62% yield, and thus the chirality in these centers was lost. With all of the oxygen groups now installed, the synthesis could be completed by first deprotecting the intramolecular acetal using sulfuric acid in water and then allowing the molecule to cyclize. First, the tertiary hydroxyl group on the same face of the ring as the ketone groups attacks the carbonyl of the diketone fragment to form a five-membered ring and produces a hemiacetal. This hemiacetal further reacts with another ketone to again form a cyclic five-membered hemiacetal which undergoes the final intramolecular attack, completing the synthesis of Nasteritol A in a 72% yield. Well that completes this week's synthesis. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. And if you have anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be back next week where I will look at the total synthesis of Hemigarin M.